coho salmon, cod, steelhead, trout, bass. These are all reasons that fishermen find the Pacific Northwest so alluring. <laughs> yeah. My name is Bill. Welcome to Call Us Now. And as I probably pretty much alluded to, our topic tonight is fishing. Uh, in just a few minutes, we'll be opening up our phone line so you, the viewing audience, can call in and uh, ask our panel of experts questions on fishing. Our number 522-3564. You'll see that number pop up from time to time during the course of the show. Let me now give you our uh, address uh, that you can write to call us now if you want to suggest a topic. I encourage you to write. Uh, the address should be up on the screen there. Uh, write to us. Suggest a topic. Uh, tell us what you think of uh, shows that you've seen. If you uh, suggest a topic, we use it. We'll send you a Call Us Now t-shirt. And when you write to us, we put you on the Call Us Now mailing list. Now, what we do in that case is we send you out a newsletter and keep you up to date on uh, all the Call Us Now happenings that go on outside of the studio. And also, we, we give you a list of upcoming topics and all sorts of neat stuff. So, so write in if you haven't already. Uh, I'd like, now I'd like to just quickly read, before we get on uh, to our show, uh, a, a letter we got from a viewer. Uh, Dan Rowe, and I'm just going to read a little bit uh, from his letter, it says, Dear Call Us Now, these are the times that try men's souls. Dirty dancing is still the rage. Teenagers are still sporting radioactive mohawks and tinfoil bangs in front of Tower Records on the Ave. Mickey Rooney is still alive and well, and Chick Hunter is still the Jesus Christ of idiots. Fortunately, your show is still happening and better than ever. Thanks, Dan. This is the kind of letters we like to get, and... Uh, uh, in fact, it's so nice. Producer Tim Stansberry has decreed this to be Dan Row Night. So uh, thanks for the letter. It's kind of a special night for you, Dan. Well, let's uh, now get back to our panel and our topic, fishing. First of all, let me introduce to my left the lovely Lola. Nice to have you here. Thank you. Hello. Okay, uh, next to... Lola is uh, Benny Bolang, who uh, I understand uh, knows a lot about fishing lures. Nice to have you here. Benny, huh? nice to have you here. Oh, oh, oh! Is this the, oh the this is about fishing today? Fishing, yeah. Because, did you know, I don't think I said the last time I was on that, that, that I do some, uh, I'm a lurist. And, uh, and uh, not just a lurist, but, but a third generation lurist which means my grandfather did some, did some luring in his day, and I could just tell you so much about luring and stuff. It just goes around in my head, you know, like crazy, and, and I want to talk about that. Okay. Right well, now? Not, not, not right now. Let's save it. We don't want to overload the viewers all at once. We'll, uh, okay. we'll save it and give them some a little later. Okay. But uh, nice to have you here. Thanks. Uh, next to Benny is David Preston, who is here from the Department of Fisheries. Nice to have you here. Well, it's nice to be here, Bill. I am from the Department of Fisheries, the Pierce County Division. And as many of the viewers may know, especially from the Pierce County area, that we're having a little trouble with our fish in Commencement Bay. Most of them are inedible, and matter of fact, you'll die if you eat them. But I'm here to share with you some of the many, many uses of contaminated fish. There's many things that can be done with contaminated fish, and like I said, I'd like to share that with you tonight. So I'll be sharing with that to you. Okay, and uh, David, I, I'm just taking a guess here, but I, I see that perhaps neckties might be uh, one of the uses. Well, of, as, uh, as many of your viewers know, especially those from Pierce County, Fish neckties are all the rage. I mean, they're, they're silk with fish painted on them. Well, I think we can go one better than that and take one of these contaminated fish that are just safe as can be as long as you don't eat it and use it for a tie. And, and all those damned yuppies out there that are wearing those fish ties, I mean, we can kind of one-up them, can't we, with, with the real fish. <laughs> Tell you what, let's uh, go to the phones and see what the viewers out in TV land have to say. Hi there. Yes, uh, I'd like to ask David uh, if he could use the mercury in the fish for thermometer. Yes, you can. It's extremely difficult to get the mercury out of a fish and in a thermometer. I think I can give you an example of that. Let's say that you had a, a fish such as this that had heavy, heavy deposits of mercury in it. And let's say that this is, this is actually a nail 
but let's say that this was a thermometer. Well, you'd have to kind of mush, mush the fish and get the mercury out the fish's nose, there's actual nostrils here, out the fish's nostrils into the thermometer. So it can be done, but not by me. <laughs> oh my God. Now, uh, well, let me ask low light here. Um, I mean, uh, fish neckties. I mean, obviously, you're uh, really into fashion here. You, you look very lovely uh, tonight, as always, I might say. Thank you. Uh, would you consider, I mean, uh, wearing kind of some kind of fish accessory? Uh, I don't know, uh, uh, maybe a brace, a fish bracelet, I guess, or some a brooch, a fish brooch? Well, um, not a real fish. No, I don't think so, because um, the odor, <laughs> I'm not really into it. Hmm, never noticed the odor myself. Oh, my. Let's go back to the phones. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Bill. Um, yes, I was wondering, the guy in the middle? Yeah, Benny. I was wondering about lures. So what would be the best kind of lure to use in a freshwater lake? Oh, this is a great question, totally. Because there are so many different factors that sometimes they're so, you know, you get up first, and it's like lots for breakfast. You know, and you just have to like get past that particular spot because there's so much to think about, like what day is it and what's the weather like and are the fish running up the stream or in, or in the lake or anything. So it's like a lot of factors and the best lure is something that's really hard to just describe just just like that. But But sometimes a good one could be just like a worm. It could just be like a worm that, that nature provided. It's a natural lure and they're everywhere, just like under rocks and things. So, or you could get more complicated, and such as my grandfather made with, with like bits of string and feathers that he finds. And it, it just goes on and on and on, and I just feel like I could sort of erupt uh -huh. with, with, you know, information. Uh, that's freshwater. That's the freshwater lakes that we're talking about, right? Well, yeah. That's, okay. Freshwater, right. Right. I, did I misunderstand? No, I just wanted to clarify for the viewers that that's fresh water. We're talking you know, about that fellow could come on down water. to Commencement Bay and he wouldn't have to use any lures because the fish are already dead. It's kind of floating on the top there. You come out in your boat and your net and just scoop up however many you want. No need for lures down there. So there's, there's actually literally uh, dead fish all over uh, Commencement Bay down there? Yeah, it's everywhere. It's, uh, you probably heard that the Alaska line, uh, the shipping line, the, the, the tourist line that goes up to Alaska located in, in Bellingham, well, one of the reasons that they did is, is they needed uh, kind of a, like an icebreaker, only actually a fish breaker, to get through Commencement Bay to get through all these dead fish. That's why they decided it wasn't profitable to, to have their base in Tacoma because of the dead fish problem. But with everyone's help, and especially the Department of Fisheries' help, we'll clean that problem right up. We'll have a lot of uses for those dead fish. Now, Benny, did, uh, did you get the knowledge that you have about lures? Uh, you got it passed down from, directly from your grandfather? Was it grandfather to dad to you? That's and, right. Uh, was it, oh, that Oh, geez, Benny. Oh, oh. Your, your microphone. Yeah. Uh, okay. That's like, sorry about this and everything, like the whole show could you just... Could, yeah, you could use a mic like that as a lure, maybe. Yeah. My, oh, maybe you should ask something else. Because my hands, they need to turn. Oh, okay, good. Oh, geez, Benny. Ah. I'll tell you what, well, Benny gets his microphone problem oh, that's such out, a good question, too. It, it did go through my father. Okay. It went through my father. Why, why don't we take a, a call here and uh, you work work on that a little. Lola, maybe you might want to give him a okay. hand there. Oh, yeah, Lola's great. got great Lola. hands. Yeah. Now, hi, hi, caller. Hi. Do any of the this fishing experts fish. know what a fish sash is? Fish sash? Yeah. It's a concept that's going around and around in my mind, and I just can't figure out what it is. A lot of people I know who fish refer to this. Well, the fish, a lot of fish live in coral areas. Uh, or like if you throw an old refrigerator, like in Commencement Bay, it's full of them. You throw an old refrigerator in there and the fish kind of live in it. And after a while, as these things rot, they get little like areas that the fish can swim on in and out of like windows. And well, the fish, they have taste and, and they like to live in nice surroundings. So they, they put sash around the windows, the window sash. And, and it's very tasteful. Some of those refrigerators are beautiful now. You ever gone fishing, Lola? You ever gone out on a boat and did a little fishing? Um, I go out on lots of boats, and um, I haven't fished for a long, long time. I paint fishes, though. They're beautiful. I love them. You paint, you paint, fi oh, no, you paint pic pictures of fish. You got fishes. it. Ah. That's what I do. <sighs> Hi. 
Hi, do we have a caller there? Hi there. Hi there. How you doing? Fine. I like your television program, except for I didn't hear the first part of it because for some reason my sound portion went out. No, we were... Uh, were you just mumbling? Yeah, we were just kind of mumbling, and I have this problem. But we're talking about fishing tonight. Yeah, 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 yeah. I knew you were doing that. Were and that's why I called. I didn't hear if you had people that are on our side, the Save the Poor Fishies uh, organization. It's a new organization. And, uh, you know, you just hear some key words for you to think about. Mr. Limpet and Flipper. Mr. Limpet, Flipper. Uh, these, are, these are fishes that are very important. And, and they're, they're people. Look at the songs, Pink Floyd, Another Fish in the Wall. And, yeah. and, and uh, uh, oh, there was uh, oh, so many of them. Rock Around the Fish. Uh -huh. was a good Are you, one. is this, Benny, is, that, is this your brother? No, it's not my brother, oh, okay. but, but he does bring up some really good questions that I deal with morally every time I get out of bed. And every time I, like, carve a piece of cork and put a feather in it, it's something that I sort of think about. I don't want to think about it, though, because otherwise, doesn't it seem to you that suddenly we just won't be doing anything? That any activity we engage in, like, has some kind of victim involved? And, and if you're just going to be that moral, then it's just a question of finding a small place to lie down and die. Does that, does that ever affect either of you? Not me. No. Mm. no. Well, not me. Hmm. Me sometimes, though. Hmm. You know, the, the, it's the, like the way out. Save the Poor Fishies, the, the stoop organization. We work very close at hand with them. They collect a lot of our dead fishes and take them around to the schools and talk about saving fish, and they use our dead fish as example. We shellack them up for them, or sometimes rigor mortis takes care of that, and they just use our fish. So the Stiffs is a real nice organization. We're well, glad to hear from one of the members. You know, um, I do a little fishing myself uh, from time to time, and, <clears throat> and one thing that uh, you're always hearing fishermen say, you know, I had him on the line, I had him on the line, and then lost him at the last second. I, I had him right there, and then he got away. I had him almost in the boat, and that's a, kind of a point I wanted to bring up right now, and actually I wanted to do just a real quick demonstration uh, using my knowledge of, of fishing, and that is that uh, anyone can cast and, and reel, and that the, the real trick is being able to net properly, get that fish in the net and bring it into the boat uh, before it, it gets away, gets off the hook. And uh, I just wanted to kind of show the proper netting technique. I got a, a net here. Ugh. And uh, kind of just want to do a little, cool. little demonstration a here. Good net. Maybe, wow. And uh, maybe I could get, uh, get Lola to, uh, to help me with this oh, but uh, Lola, demonstration. But, wait, but Lola, I don't think she has the experience. It might not go over well. well I, I, I mean, I have some I'd experience. Like, I'd like to show Lola. But, you know, it's that it, she's nice and everything, and, and sometimes I like looking down her dress. Is that okay? But maybe I should be the one with the net. Be oh. Yeah, why don't you, why don't I you just I leave that? I think I better pictures of you. Okay. okay, how far can we go here? It's, 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 okay, put your hands <coughs> around it gently. There we go. Okay, now do that. Okay. Okay, there you go. Oh, that, oh, that was, was real fun. good. That was real good. Go ahead and try Okay, I'll, um, you're on your own now. I'm letting Whee! go. Okay. We're missing our dip. Mm. Are you so tubular. That was really good, Lola. Right. Really good. It's awesome. I think I got it. Okay, thanks. It's like my uh, exercises. Yeah, there you go. I think that's enough. <sighs> good breathing. Thank you. Catch Thank birds you. with that thing. Yeah. So, uh, of course, I, I sort of have to interject at this point that yeah. that uh, the net is is uh, somewhat valueless to you if you can't get the fish to approach the boat, which is exactly where my sainted grandfather came in. With with the lures again, we're back to lures. Right, but I don't think I quite made my case strong enough a minute ago, because it, it, as soon as you kind of become one with the water, the body of water that you're working on, you just kind of go out early in the morning before you're going to fish, and and you just sort of feel the water temperature, and he knew just what to look for, what birds and stuff. And then he could go right into his bag and come out with some lures, which I have some examples of his that are very old and very valuable. This is, he, he created the rubber worm, which is, which, which is a standard piece of fishing equipment. It's not all that exciting, except that rubber wasn't invented 10 years until after he was dead. But this is one, see, look here. I had to strip it down to clean it and sand it. Uh, but you see, this looks just like a small fish, and with the right kind of feathers or, or pieces of seaweed or stuff, fish just go for this thing, just, wow, it's great. Well, I, I don't understand. Let me give a demonstration here. I mean, if, if the fish went for this, I mean, you know, I mean, how on earth, yeah, 
Oh, there I see. There you go. But I mean, the thing comes right out again. I mean, there's nothing to keep it in that in that little fish's mouth there. You know, it just goes in and right. It's like I don't like to be the kind of guy that insults people, but if you're a little caliber of person that works for the state, I'm I'm just like so worried about the quality of our water. Because you see, this is just the lure, thank you, and now it has to be washed again. Because we put hooks on it, like when we're oh, ready to oh, fish. Hooks. All right, I understand wow. now. Hooks. It's a nice color. <laughs> There's no hooks on it. Thanks. Is what I asked. You're I developed this color. All right. Yeah. Go ahead and uh, go back to the phone. Hi. Oh, I didn't mean to startle you. Hi. Yes, I have a question for each of the panelists. Okay. And I would like to know if they've actually caught a fish, and if so, what kind? And were they stream fishing? Or were they actually in a boat or just kind of standing off to the shore fishing or wherever? This kind of general fishing experience stories is what you're after. Yes. Okay. Go, go ahead, start us off, Lola. I caught a rock cod, and it was like black with red polka dots, and it was awesome. It was gorgeous. And um, I kept it for a long time. We never ate it because I just couldn't. It was uh, great. Uh -huh. Benny? She's on a big rock that I caught it. <laughs> you just gonna be so cute. I don't know. What kind of lure were you using? Is it, was it just like? Oh, uh, I'm not sure. It was a long time ago. Oh, well, that's okay. Might have been your grandfather's. <laughs> Maybe it was. That would have been really wow. Did, do I get to answer? You get to answer now. It's your Because, yeah, it sort of was a little bit dramatic when I was younger. Uh, but when, when I, my first and only fish I caught, and then I just became a lurist and, and spent the rest of my fishing days sort of behind the desk, you know. Uh, the first one was a beautiful example of a lake rainbow trout. It was much lovelier than this pathetic creature here on your knee. And anyway, it flipped around so much, and I just oh. could not get my hands on it. It just gave me the creeps. So we, Dad just kind of called me a sissy, and we had to put it back. It's a fish dance. <laughs> He was kind of a fish dance, yeah. Hot. Well, down in Commencement Bay, it's pretty darn easy to catch fish. All you need is a boat and a good magnet. They're just floating all over the surface. You just take that magnet. You can put it on the end of a fish line if you like, throw it over the side, and the bigger the magnet, I mean, you can come up with 18, 19 fish in, in one pull. I mean, I caught over 9,000 dead fish this weekend. Wow. Yeah. They don't flip around, do they? No, they're very cooperative. <gasps> wow. Circular. Yeah, some of them are. Well. So what other, uh, you know, I, I can't help but notice you got a, a little table of, of just all sorts of I stuff know. over there. I know. Uh, well, there's a lot of things that you can do with fish. I think things, that's what you're asking. Things to do that. with fish. Okay. Things to I do mean, with there's, fish. There's a lot of, of things you can do with fish, and I'm here to show you some of them tonight. One of my favorite is, is well, I, I have a car I'm, I'm rather proud of. I have a 73 Pinto. I mean, kind of rare, and I like to take real good care of it. One of the things that I like to do with the Pinto is keep it nice and buffed and shiny. And as everyone knows, these have, have minerals in them and oils and stuff. So I just go out there on a Saturday morning and just kind of take this out there and, and just kind of rub it up against the car like that and just sort of buffs right out, you know, just kind of, you know, gets the, like if you've got oxidation or whatever, the metal in the fish just kind of works to, to do that. And, some of the other things, like, well, uh, for example, let's let's say uh, let's say that I'm at a party. So at a, I'm at a party. Let's say that that Lola's at. If I'd like to be at a party that Lola's at, I bet a lot of you would too. Well, you you just kind of go like this, and and uh, you take the fish and put it on a platter like that, and you you take the nail that was a thermometer earlier, and you take oh, take wait, the fish. You're doing the same thing I'm doing here. Look, Oops. there's your microphone right yeah. there. Thing. The fish didn't think it was a lure and eat it there. You take the fish and put it on the platter like this. You take a nail, run it right through the fish. Don't oh. be shy. The fish is already dead. And then you go like this, and you you kind of, it's a good party game. You play spin the fish. And you just oh. spin that thing around like this. And, well, if it ends up pointing like that, you get a little kiss from Lola. Oh. Real fun. It, it's like the last temptation of trout, you know, with your yeah. nail through them and everything. Oh, well, yeah, it is, yeah. And, and, and in something else, I'd like one last thing here. I'm kind of a, I think you've figured out from that demonstration, I'm a kind of a fun guy. Well, one of the things that is real fun that you can do with these trout is you just take it and right. say you have some guests over for dinner. Well, you take and you just put the fish on the plate, and when they're not looking, or you're going to camouflage this underneath the uh, tablecloth, you just 
run an electrical cord in there like this and we've got the other end plugged in and, and let me give you an idea what happens. Uh, hey young fellow, would you like a little fish? Here you go. Dig in. No thank you really, sir. I'll just have a bite here. It's, it's real good. Uh, don't worry about this. This is its uh, uh, entrails. Okay. Go ahead. Just go put ahead. the fork in it? Yeah, is go it, ahead. Am just I going to get hurt? No, no, trust me. Okay. I went ah. to the state. Yeah, see? <laughs> Never trust anyone that works for the state, young man. So, Bill, there's a lot of uses for these fish. Uh, I guess so. I, yeah. I got really bad gas now. Oh, jeez. You know, uh, I think we'll go ahead and uh, we have to take a quick commercial break here. Um, Sorry, I dropped it. It's all right. Yeah, and give uh, Benny a chance to get rid of his gas. Uh, so why don't back. we go ahead and uh, roll that commercial, and uh, and then we'll we'll be right back in in just a second. You want all right there, are you? We're having problems with the commercial, eh? Okay. So I'll tell you what. Uh, let's go. Uh, second best thing. Let's take a call. Hi. Are you like okay? Yeah, we're fine. They do Bud. work well with potatoes. You can so. take them and, and like if you if you don't actually eat them and you put them on a plate and there's potatoes all over the plate and you can put the fish there and you can eat the potatoes and not eat the fish. So they do work well with spuds, yeah. I think he was referring to uh, using potatoes as lures. I think that's what, uh, you know, oh. not, not, the, not the finished uh, that could, that, that could be something. That could be something. I'm always looking for new, new like things to use. For example, when you said magnet, whoo, my head just went round and around. Because I thought, what about spreading really small BBs throughout a stream? Maybe you could paint them an attractive color. And then when all the fish eat the BBs, one of my brand new lures that is made of a magnet, you could just pull it through the water. What do you think of that? Well, sounds like a darn good idea to me. I don't quite have it. I do not quite have it, but it is really close. Oh. You know what we do have? We have our commercial now, so uh, so we can pay our bills. Here it is, folks. Slapping out of tempo, keeping perfect rhythm with the song on the radio. You've seen them at state fairs, rodeos, and shopping malls. They're the Cud Sisters. And now you can purchase their latest album, The Cud Sisters' Favorite Hits. You can enjoy the favorite hit songs that the Cud Sisters listen to at home, like Stand By Your Man. I Never Promised You a Rose Garden. I'm Not Lisa. I Am the Walrus. Did you ever see a dream walking? China Grove. I'm not Lisa. Little Red Corvette. The Monkey's Theme. And of course, Que Sera Sera. One. And who could forget? Johnny, are you queer? Dancing Queen. I'm not Lisa. I'm not Lisa. Here's how to order. My name is Julie. Hi, this is Darlene Cut, And you know, for the first time, it's your chance to bring the exciting sounds of the Cud Sisters' favorite songs into your home. Available on 8-track only. Please send check or money orders for $9.95 to the Cud Sisters. That's Avon, Connecticut, Post Office Box 313-78919. Well, we've got a caller on the line. Hi, do you have a question for us tonight? Yeah, I got a couple. Oh, okay. Well, hi, I got your, your newsletter. All right, so you, you've written to us before or... or no, called I called in on the, for it. Called during the telethon, I bet, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I have another question, a few questions. Uh-huh. Um, the guy with the fish tie, uh -huh. is that a real fish or is it rubber? And I have another question after that. Go, go ahead and ask the other one. We'll answer them both at the same time here. Well, I'd like to say something. Uh, it's not bad or anything, right? Um, you're cool, Bill. And I have another question after this. Um, we, is it true about you and Don Johnson? No. Yes, I'm afraid it is true about Don Johnson and I, and well, you that get the newsletter know what we're talking about. But let's get back to your uh, the, the the real fish. This is a real fish. I think uh, all of us. Yeah. Can we get a close up on the fish here? I'd like to answer this question. But 
showing that. Now let's see here. Got a close up on the fish here. Can we have a close up on the fish? Uh, yeah, yeah, see, see, I mean, we're talking real fish here. Real fish. I mean, there's a little mouth there. And let's get in the mouth there, you know. Um, blah, 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 you know, this is, um, so that's a real fish. And the, uh, the other question that he had is, is yes, I think Bill's cool too. And, uh, well, uh, one's, and then the third question, one's personal life is one's own business. Which makes me think of one more good use, uh, the Don Johnson thing, for uh, these fish. Uh, there's a lady present. I don't mean to offend you, lovely Lola, but in this age, we have some, some sexual diseases out there that are quite serious. And one of the great things that you can use with these fish is they make wonderful condoms. I mean, you're just... They make great condoms. There's, you don't, you know, it's, it's very safe, and they're about, well, I don't know about, about you fellas, but they're just about the right size for mm -hmm. anybody that works mm -hmm. for the state, and you just kind of slip it on there and mm -hmm. use it. And, yeah, but uh, the smell, oh, 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 okay, never mind. Yeah, yeah you're yeah, a smart boy mm -hmm. there, Bill. <laughs> so sure. Well, I, go ahead. I have like a really great idea, though. They'd be so so cool for flower vases, though. Stand them on their tails. Oh, wow. Wow. It's a good idea. You can put like a daffodil or a mum. Put a mum in there. It'd be nice with a mum. Well, no, I. So our, cool. our time is coming close to being over, and before I go, I had to say something that was sort of much more important than, than a fish condom, and so I hope it's okay that I'm stepping in like this. Because the next time I went fishing after my story about how it flipped around the boat and Dad called me a sissy and everything, the next time I went fishing was about like 13 years later. And I was fishing by myself just to sort of overcome this, this problem I'd had. This, this doesn't go on much longer. And anyway, I hooked something and I got all nervous. Like, this is just like parachuting. I have to go through this to become... And look what came out of the river. This is going to totally blow you away. Look, I haven't cleaned up. It didn't look exactly like this that day, but look. Look at this. It's a pendant. And I think it's like aztec and turquoise or something. It's really important. So it's like a lost continent or something? I think it probably came from a lost continent. But what I think it really is like, and I, that's why I had to say it on TV, because I think it was the goddess of the river thanking me for 13 years of vegetarianism. Maybe it was so, somebody swimming and it fell off their neck. I, I think it was a kid because so. it's not even real. No, I don't think so. I think it's real, though. It's, I think no it's, way. it's thanks for, I should have known not to bring it on this dumb show. I think it's thanks for being a vegetarian. And I think in 13 more years when I go back, I'll catch something else. Hey, where do, I like no turquoise. Where do, uh, where do fish witches come from? What kind of fish do those things come from? I was just thinking about that. It's real. It oh, is, you it know is little real. wisp brooms that you use to clean out your car? Yeah. Well, that's what they're made out of. They're actually wisp. not fish. They're wisp brooms. I had a hunch. Yeah. Let's go back to the phones. Hi. Hey, how can you do this to those fish? It's easy it's much. Whaling, it's like killing them, you know? Well, I guess you could say that, but Commencement Bay did it. I didn't do it. Uh, we got any more uh, fish uses? Well, let's there? see here. Yeah, one of the things you can do here, let's say well, you finish carpenters out there. Let's say you've got a got your finishing nail, you know, the kinds of the little tiny heads on them that, that are so mm -hmm. easy. And uh, you want to hold this for me? Thanks. Oh. And you just kind of, you know, you get those finishing nails down so far, you know, and and... and you don't want to go any farther because you don't want to make a little divot in the things here. So you just kind of get it down and then you take the fish and, and after a while they get solid and you just kind of go like this. And, oh. and it, just takes, oh it just takes it down there and, and puts, puts it in, <laughs> in there. Just puts it down in there the rest of the way so finish carpentry work. And then well, if you have a nice piece of oak like this is, I mean you're, you're kind of you're doing that and then you're rubbing it into the oak and it kind of brings out the grain. Really nice. I would never do that. I would never do that. Fishing would be goddess of the river. I would never, mm. never would I do that. Mm. Hello, caller. Hi. I was wondering if anyone on the panel might have any ideas where I should fish this weekend during the big derby. Commencement Bay. I guess that's not your, It sounds like a surefire uh, way to catch fish. Would totally it's depend on what lure she was using, you know? I don't think they even need lures. Just take a, take one of these babies. Yeah. Talking nets again here. Take one of these, just scoop them right out. Right. Yeah, Sky Comis, the yummy salmon. Yummy salmon? Sky Comis. Sky So what do you say? Kids want to play a little fish toss? Come on, let's do a little fish toss. Yeah, I got the bucket out there. All right, I'll put the bucket out there. A little shot here. 
Whoa, that needs right. some really cool. Pretty neat. Okay. Okay. Oh! Oh! Come on, Lola, give it a shot. Okay.